Hey everyone, today we're going to look at using Canvas Studio for assignments. Canvas Studio is a great tool for professors to use. You can record screencasts, you can capture yourself on webcam or both, you can import videos from other sources like YouTube or upload from your computer. There are a lot of things you can do with Studio, but something that we don't really explore too much is how can you get students really interacting and using Studio from their end in order to complete their assignments. And so that's what I want to start exploring today involving the students with the studio multimedia creation process. So if you're new to this channel or if you're lazy like me and haven't subscribed, then I really encourage you to do so. I have new content coming out and subscribing to this channel is a good way so that you don't have anybody break into your office and maliciously steal all of your Canvas Studio videos that you've worked so hard to produce. For extra insurance, you might want to click that bell to receive notifications. So let's jump into a course from the student view and look at some ideas that I have about how to use Studio in your assignments. The first one here, this page is actually more of a content page. And so this is just, if you're not familiar with Studio, how you can use the platform and integrate it onto the content of your page. In this first example, I have a title, I have some boilerplate text, and then I embedded a Studio video and the video has a timeline. And so throughout the video, there are comments that pop up. And this is a way that your studio video can have its own discussion and have interactivity that people can be asking questions or responding to prompts along the timeline and you can get some dialogue right within the video scrolling down you also have examples of studio videos where the comments are turned off and so it's just embedded media and the benefit would be i have access to the analytics so i know which students have seen these videos and have the students skipped any sections or did they watch it completely and which students still need to watch my videos so again, this is a regular content page. Now let's explore how you can use the quizzing function within Studio. So this here is an actual assignment page. It's not a quiz in Canvas, it's just an assignment. And so I have some instructions and then I have this quiz here. In order to do this approach, I would probably have this be a low stakes quiz, more a way so that students can benchmark their understanding and they can log what they need to focus on for the unit. So I, as a student, have already taken this quiz, so I'm gonna retake the quiz. And then the video will play and you can see on the timeline there are a couple of quiz questions and I could skip ahead to one of those. Now the teacher is going to know if the students are skipping ahead only to the questions and they're not watching the rest of the content. But this way I can start submitting answers and then I can skip ahead again. Ideally I would watch the whole movie. Right now I'm just going to skip to the question and then I can fill in my answers. If I need to rewatch it then it'll take me back to the previous point and then I can go and do that so I'm gonna click continue I can finish watching the video or in my case I'll just skip to the end so it looks like I finished the video I answered all the questions I'm ready to submit the quiz and if I want I can view the quiz results it looks like I got a 50% I've taken it a few times and it looks like I missed a few over there so if I wanted to I could retake it again so you can embed a quiz studio video on an assignment page on a regular content page within a discussion or on an actual canvas quiz I'm going to show the same interaction, but this time the questions are hidden on the timeline. And so I'll go ahead and retake this quiz. And now you can see that same video, except for I don't see the markers where the questions are. So I can't just skip ahead. I have to watch the video and the questions come as it gets to that point on the timeline. So I could skip to the end, but then I haven't really answered all of the questions. And so I could submit an incomplete quiz or I could just resume the quiz. Now if I pull up the teacher view, then I can scroll down to this studio video and I can see the quiz results. And then I can see some statistics. It looks like people didn't really do all that great, but I can see student by student, which students have taken it, how long did they spend, when did they submit the assignments, what grade did they get. And then I can go into their attempts and I can see what they got right or wrong. So again, I think that this is a good approach for low stakes quizzes so that you can either establish benchmarks or that you can see your progress and see what things you need to work on. So I have a couple of other approaches on how you can use Studio for quizzes. And this is to actually put the Studio video into a Canvas quiz itself. And there are two different approaches that I'm going to show here. So this first one, I have the instructions for the quiz and the instructions are to watch the video in response to the quiz prompts and I have the prompts throughout the video. So I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom here. I've already started the quiz, so I'm gonna go ahead and resume the quiz. And now I can see the instructions. I'm gonna mute this and we'll go ahead and play it. And then you can see throughout the timeline, there are various prompts. I have prompt number one, prompt number two through five. And then for the quiz questions, 
I have the instructions respond to prompt number one. So then the student would go back up to the video and they would see this section and the first prompt. And then for question number two, they would respond to prompt number two. So they just gathered those prompts from the timeline on the video, and then they would use that to complete the quiz assignments. So for this next quiz example, I actually embed studio videos into the quiz questions themselves instead of putting it in the instructions. So I've already taken this quiz, but I'm going to go ahead and take it again. And now I can see there's some instructions, there's a picture. And then as I scroll down, I have a studio video and I can play that video and then I can respond to the question in that video. So I'd respond to that right in the quiz question and then I can submit that. Here's a video that has a multiple answer quiz question. And finally, I would watch this video to determine this true or false question. And then I can submit the quiz. So I actually like that approach a lot. And even if you use the same video, you could put the same video in each question. It's really up to how you want to set up the assignment. Now here's a regular assignment where I'm going to have the students actually create studio videos and they would submit those studio videos to me. And that could be an individual assignment that they have to create their own screencast or webcam video, or they could work in groups and this could be a group assignment. But you notice when I click new attempt, because I've already submitted this as a student, then I have the option for file upload, text entry, and studio video. So for file upload, if I create a studio video and download it to my computer, then I'd be able to search for that file on my computer and upload that. For text entry, I could submit the URL to the studio video once I create that shared link, and then I can submit that. Or I can search through my studio videos, and I would be able to submit the video by selecting it. From the course development standpoint, as I'm creating this assignment, I'm going to have my title, my overview, and then the submission type, I'm going to choose online. And in order for students to submit a studio video, I'm going to select the text entry option as well as the file upload option. And that'll give the students either the opportunity to share the link to their studio video with me, or they can embed the video from their online studio repository. If you need to help students to find the link to share for the assignment, then they would go onto their global studio page, and then they can click share media. And this is where they can create a link and just copy that link. And that's what they would submit for the assignment. Now let's talk about how you can use Canvas Studio as a discussion tool. So I have three different options I'm going to show you. The first one is I create these instructions for my discussion posts, and then I, as the professor, I'll submit initial posts, and I'm going to embed a studio video into each one of my posts. And so the assignment for the students would be to reply to one of my threads, or maybe multiple or all of my threads, and then they can reflect on the multimedia prompts that I give them. They can either type out the responses or you can have them upload their own studio response to my thread. They would either create a screen capture or record a webcam response. What I would want to emphasize in the instructions if I was doing this approach would be to tell the students not to create their own initial threads, which is a typical approach for a discussion board, but rather to respond to my prompts that I've created. I've done this in classes and it works pretty well. Another option for them would be to have them create their own initial posts and they can create video responses. So in this case, they would create their own initial thread and they would record their webcam or they can record their screen capture. It just depends on the nature of the assignment. I really like having students use the studio function as part of the discussion thread because text on a page, it has merit and it has value, but you don't want to repeat that for every single discussion that you ever teach in your classes. I think it's good to get some face time especially for those online classes. And using the screen capture method is a great way to have students screencast. They can show processes, demonstrations, simulations. It's a very interactive way to incorporate multimedia into your discussions. Now for this third option, I actually have a studio video embedded right into the instructions for the discussion. And then I have prompts along the timeline. And this is the same video that I showed earlier that has the prompts. And so you can go in before the discussion and put prompts. You can tell them, watch this video, whether it's a TED Talk or some kind of informative or persuasive video. And you can put your own prompts in that you want them to respond to. And so the instructions for the discussion could be something along the lines of respond to every prompt or pick three prompts that you want to respond to. And then you can choose when they're posting their replies, do you want that to be text on the page? Or do you want them to create their own studio videos as a response to the prompts that you have? So there are a lot of options for incorporating Studio into discussion threads. Another assignment that could be fun is to have them create annotated videos. And in this case, what they would do is the instructions are create a video using Canvas Studio, 
or you could have them incorporate videos like from YouTube or upload a video from their computer and then they can annotate their video and then submit the video as an assignment to you. So you would review their annotations. So in this example assignment page, I actually created a video, a short 45 second video teaching the students how they can create annotated studio videos. So that way I demonstrate to my students by doing. And I think this step is important for me because I don't want the students getting tangled up in the actual educational technology components. I don't want them to spend too much time learning how to do a process. I want them to dedicate their time to mastery of the concepts of the course and actually completing assignments. So focus more on the scholarship and the academics and less on the technology. So let's go ahead and peek at this video that I created for my students. Here's a quick overview on how you can annotate your video. So first thing you're going to want to go onto your studio icon here in the global navigation and locate the video that you want to annotate. When you found it, click on the kebab icon and click on annotate video. This will pull up a video and you can move to the timeline where you want to add your annotation. Click on the plus button and here's where you can put in your headline. You can add in a description if you'd like and you can even put in a link. Once you have that put in, then you can click save. You can always go back and edit the information, but this is how you create an annotation for your video. So again, this list isn't comprehensive, but this is at least a way to start brainstorming ways that you can get students interacting with Studio as part of their formal assessments in your classes. I would love to hear your thoughts, your ideas, anything that you've tried that works or doesn't work. Please let me know in the comments below. Once again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, get notifications so that you can be informed whenever I drop new content. And you can also follow me on social media. I'm on the Insta and the Facebook. What else? The Twitter. And that's it for today. For those of you who are starting a new academic year, I wish you happy teaching and learning.